This is your neighborhood friendly rancher speaking, coming to you live after seeing the brand new Three Musketeers movie. And I kind of get wanted to give you guys an, an unbiased look at uh, my my review of the movie, um, being a fan of the 1993-1994 version. And, you know, I kind of do have to preface it by saying that there was probably no one more hyped for this movie than I was. I mean, I was super, super excited when I saw the trailers for this because I did love the 1993 version with Charlie Sheen and Kiefer Sutherland and, and Tim Curry. And I, I really loved that version so much because I wore it out in my VHS as a kid. And... I had so much of a high expectation for this movie, and I really wanted this movie to work, but it just didn't. Uh, there were a lot of flaws and a lot of Hollywood tampering with this movie. I've never read the books, so I can't say how accurate to the books these, these uh, movies are, but I can say, as a movie, this one just fell flat. Uh, the bar was set pretty high with the 1993 version and the um, the Man in the Iron Mask. So this one just it was supposed to have a style and flair to it all its own, and it it really just didn't. It kind of it added new things, new flashy things that really just didn't need to be added. Uh, the biggest gripe I had with this movie is the character development. There is so little of it. And uh, that that's the real downfall of this movie. It had no character development as far as the Three Musketeers and, and D'Artagnan is concerned. In the, in the 1993 version, D'Artagnan is cocky and arrogant because his father has died and his father was a musketeer, a world-renowned musketeer, as a matter of fact, and uh, you get the feeling that Chris O'Donnell's character as D'Artagnan is kind of cocky and arrogant because he's trying to live up to his father's name. In this one, his father's still alive, you know, all this kind of stuff, you know, his, his mom's still alive, there's nothing wrong with the character other than he's cocky and he's a jerk, you know, and that's it. You know, he's just cocky and a jerk because he can be. And it kind of ruined his character for me. And then the, the Musketeers themselves, uh, they don't really go into too much depth on the Musketeers. They don't really flesh out those characters as much as they should have. Uh, you know, you get to see their personal in the, in the 1993 version, you get to see their personalities and, and how well they interact off of each other and you actually get to view them through their own style and you get to realize that you know this is why they fight the way they fight and you know it's just part of their personality whereas in this one they just kind of had their own style because they had their own style um, and really you just didn't feel for the characters at all uh, this one they're, they're just kind of a bunch of drunks you know that, that lay around all day unemployed losers pretty much and in the first, you know, in the first one, they they weren't like that. They were actually. It starts out they were still a part of the Musketeers. They were part of the Castle Guard, and the whole reason they're disgruntled is because the Cardinal disbands them, and they're the only three left that want to uphold that tradition. So that's why they're disgruntled, and you can really kind of feel that for them in the movie. And you can feel, you know, the characters. In this one, the characters are just there. Uh, they're just the musketeers. Um, another character, the, the main character that kind of bothered me was Mila Jovich's character. Because there was no development at all. And she was nine-tenths fan service. Um, half the time, she was just there to look pretty and wear revealing outfits. Like, pretty much most of her movies are anyway, like The Fifth Element. But she ends up betraying, it's, it's like the first 10, 15 minutes, she ends up betraying the Musketeers. And what bothers me about this scene is that you're, they're establishing the love between Mila Jovich 
is her character Milady and the main the lead of the Three Musketeers played by Angus McFadden of Pride and Prejudice fame they're establishing that but they don't really do anything romantic that really lets you know that they love each other it's just Milo Jovich says I love you about three or four different times and like kisses him that's it and later on in the movie it really makes it hard to get behind his his feelings on her betrayal it, it, get, it, it makes it hard for me as a watcher you know as a viewer of this movie to really understand why he is why he's disgruntled they just kind of expect you to accept it and I, I'm pretty good for suspension of disbelief but you know when they don't develop it enough is kind of it kind of ruins it another thing that bothered me was the airship uh, they break in it's it's like the ten, the like I said the first 10 15 minutes they break it in to get the plans for this airship that was made that was invented by da Vinci and they break in and they steal it and this airship is so implausible i mean i laughed i laughed at this airship because there's a fight scene between these two airships and it, this airship gets just absolutely decimated. They shoot holes through the canvas of it, and it's this big giant ship with just a big hot air balloon on top of it. They shoot through the canvas with cannonballs, and they slice it up. And this thing just doesn't plummet to the earth? That's such bull. It would fall faster than a freaking Led Zeppelin. Um, and that was so implausible, laughably so. Um, and really, the the biggest insult to my intelligence, and really almost made me completely hate this movie, was the ending. The ending was so Hollywood stereotypical, left it wide open for a sequel. And it's not one of those sequels, you know, not one of those endings that you know you can tell by the ending that you know could be a sequel, could not. This one was so obvious, like, there's going to be a sequel. I, I can almost guarantee it. There's, they're going to try and make a sequel out of this movie. And judging by the audience that was there when I went, and considering that it's like a night after premiere night, uh, you're not going to want to make another sequel, because there was like maybe five people in the entire fucking theater. But this movie kind of fell flat as far as the, the ending because in the 1993 version which I keep referencing which you should go see instead of this piece of shit the 1993 version ends everything it wraps up everything you kill the cardinal you kill the guy that killed D'Artagnan's father the cardinal guard and everything's set right and the, the three musketeers are rewarded but in this one that doesn't happen, you know, they end with, you know, these big mysteries, quote unquote, but it's not even subtle. You know, usually I can, I can suspend my disbelief enough to watch a surprise happen, but in this, there was none of that, because it's not even subtle, it's, you're going to see a sequel, and I just felt like that insulted my intelligence so much that it almost pissed me off about this movie. Um, so in short, it's a great film if you just haven't seen any of the other Three Musketeers movies, and if you're looking for something flashy, but as far as even flashy in style, it doesn't, it doesn't have much to offer there either. Um, so my recommendation is don't bother spending your money on watching this movie. If you see it on Netflix and you can get it for really cheap, I would recommend renting it and sending it back. But other than that, don't bother with it. It's really not worth the time. So that's my review of this movie.